Welcome back. This is Wang Kili. I'm a classical saxophonist. Today, I want to talk to you how to tongue fast on saxophone. And we are not going to discuss double or triple tonguing today. We will only focus on the single tonguing. Now, what is the fastest tempo that we could single tongue? And I would say it's going to be around 140 beats per minute with 60 notes. When you are learning saxophone, most of us struggle with tonguing. But tonguing is so crucial because it is literally everywhere in a repertoire. So today I want to show you my specific approach to fast tonguing. Obviously there are many different kinds of approaches to this technique, but I want to give you five professional tips to achieve fast tonguing on saxophone. Now before we begin, I'm going to make more tutorial videos for specific saxophone techniques. So if you are interested, please make sure to subscribe. Tip number one. Tonguing is not an attack, it's a release. We feel that tonguing is literally attacking the reed with our tongue, but I want to take a look into this from different perspective. And this is so important to realize in order to truly understand what's going on with our tongue and the reed. When you're tonguing, the moment your tongue is touching the reed, there is absolutely no sound. On the other hand, when your tongue is released from the reed, there is a sound. The arrow shows the amount of time a tongue is touching a reed. Also, it indicates that the air is keep coming from our lungs, but you are simply blocking it with your tongue. The blue parentheses indicates the moment the tongue is released from the reed. Thus, a sound pops out. In the staccato, you are attaching tongue longer and releasing the tongue shorter, thus getting a sound in a short amount of time. On the other hand, in tenuto, you are attaching a tongue shorter and releasing a tongue from the reed longer, thus getting a longer amount of sound. I mean, it sounds obvious when you think about it, but psychologically, many of us are thinking more about how to attack the reed rather than how to release from the reed. And main benefit of this realization is that you're not going to use excessive amount of force on your tongue when you're attacking the reed. And here's the good news. Your tongue already has enough power. You don't even need to practice. You are born with it. Tongue happens to be one of the most strongest muscles that we have in our system, and it comprises of many different muscles. For example, you are speaking all day, but you never actually get tired from speaking, right? I mean, you never say your tongue is tired so that you can speak. It's because your tongue is made of different kinds of muscles that can cover the same task. So if one muscle gets tired to do one task, other muscle kicks in to do the same task. So it's actually a pretty amazing organ we have. So I would say, let's just relax first. Once you understand these concepts, let's talk about amount of force necessary to stop a reed from vibrating. And the answer is very little. Which brings us to the second tip, tip number two, use half tonguing. Half tonguing is a unique technique in which you use your tongue to mute the reed. So you're attaching your tongue to the reed, but reed is still vibrating enough to create a sound. So it gives a muffled sound. Let me show you. to do this so that you know how much force you need to stop a reed from vibrating. And you will quickly realize that you don't need much force to do that. Now let's talk about position of our tongue when we are tonguing. We often use the word front, middle, or back to describe the position of our tonguing. But I want to avoid using that today because our sensation and actual movement of our tonguing are often quite different. So I can say use the front of tongue, but that may be completely different for each student how they perceive the frontness of the tongue. Instead, I will give you my favorite syllable for tonguing, which brings us to the tip number three, use na for tonguing. 
Often we use T or TA for tonguing syllables, and they're fine for regular tonguings, but when it comes to fast tonguing, they're actually a bit too heavy. Because in you know, order to pronounce T or TA, you need to attach your tongue to the hard palato of your mouth. And that requires some force in order to create kind of a positive sound. Instead, NA does the similar movement, but it's much lighter in the touch and much softer. So it actually resembles the movement of fast tonguing. Let me show you with metronome and how it sounds. First, I'm going to start with TA. And as you can see, it's fine, but I feel a little bit of tension going on with the back of a tongue. So let's try with na. And as you can see, na is much easier to tongue faster, and there is no tension on my tongue. So it's actually quite ideal syllable to practice faster tonguing. Now when you practice this, make sure not to move your mouth. Try not to open it like ta 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 wa na 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 na. We want to make sure to replicate the same situation as though we are playing the instrument. So we want to keep it tight. Na 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 like this. Tip number four. Make sure to keep steady airflow when you are tonguing. And this is very important because when you release your tongue from the reed, you want to make sure that there's enough airflow and enough air pressure to create a sound. It's basically the same as playing the long tone exercise, but your tongue is the only one blocking the airflow between the reed and mouthpiece. It looks like this. <laughs> Finally, the last tip, tip number five, use slightly stronger reed. It's actually easier to tongue on a stronger reed because the stronger reed tends to snap back to its original position faster than the thinner reed. So I always have a few stronger reed in my reed case, just in case. Now obviously you want to think about the balance, you don't want to have too much strength from the reed, otherwise you won't be able to create a sound comfortably. But the rule of thumb is that when you're playing a piece that requires a lot of tonguing, then I would use the stronger reed. But if the piece is simply lyrical, I would prefer to use the softer reed for the better control of vibrato and phrasings. Because you watched until the very end, I want to thank you with a special tip for super fast single tonguing. And that is to use an air attack for the first note of attack. Now, it only works for a set of 16 notes, about 4 16 notes or 6 16 notes, but it's very effective. So you're going to attack the first note with ha, air, ha, and then do the single tonguing. So if it's a full set of 16 notes, you're going to do ha ta 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 ha ta 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 ha ta 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 And previously I told you not to practice it with ta, but please forgive me for the sake of explanation, I'm going to use ta. So if you use ha ta 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 ta, then you can actually bring the tempo up to 168 beat per minute. So that's quite useful. And let me show you how it works in actual music. I'm going to play for you a cadenza from Glasnow Saxophone Concerto. So that's it. I hope it was helpful for you. Please let me know what you think in the comment. I'll be making more videos like this in the near future, so please make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.